Hello everyone. This video would focus on graphing quadratic equation in vertex form and this is the third part. In this part, the absolute value of A is greater than 1. Before we go further, please feel free to check out the description box below for the link of the other series of topics related to graphing quadratic equation in vertex form. Before we jump into this example right here, let's have a review on the basics of quadratic equation in vertex form. We remember that the vertex form or the graphing form of a parabola that opens up or down is given in an equation y equals a quantity x minus h squared plus k. Now let's look at the parameters a, h, and k in this equation. We remember that if the value of a is positive, the graph opens upward. On the other hand, if the value of A is zero, the graph becomes a horizontal line. If the value of A is negative, the graph opens downward. Moreover, the closer the value of A is to zero, the wider the parabola is. So please notice that when we change the value of A towards zero, the wider it becomes until a point that the graph becomes a horizontal line. And this is true on the other side as well. The closer the value of A is to zero, the wider the parabola is. So again, if you notice, the parabola becomes wider and wider as we change the value of A towards zero until such a point that it becomes very wide and at zero it becomes a horizontal line. On the contrary, the farther the value of A is from zero, the narrower the graph becomes. And that is true on the other side as well. The farther the value of A is from zero, the narrower the parabola becomes. Please remember that the coordinates h, k is the vertex of the parabola where the h moves the graph or translates the graph left or right while the k translates the graph up or down. <laughs> Okay, so we go over this problem here. The first step is to determine the locator point or the vertex. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Our vertex or locator point would be the H and K. So here's a trick. To get the vertex or the locator point, we're going to switch the sign of this. So that's a negative 3, so it comes out positive 3. And then we keep the sign of this. That would be a positive 5. So this is the locator point or the vertex of this parabola. The second step is to create and complete the table of values. So I'm going to go ahead and um, draw the table of values right here. Now we're going to fill this in with values. Now please remember that this locator point or vertex shall be placed in the middle of the table. So I'm going to go ahead and put that up here. So this is 3 and 5. And then we determine the rest of the values that is after this 3 would be 4. So I'm going to go ahead and write 4 up here. Then we will have 5. Then we go the other way. That would be 2 and 1. Now we are going to determine the values for each of these blank boxes. So we are going to use this equation right here in order that we can determine these values. So we're going to start with x is equal to 2. So I'm going to go ahead and show that work up here. So x is equal to 2. So then I will write this equation that we have right here and plug this 2 into the x. So that would be y equals negative 2 times, that's minus 3, squared plus 5. Again, the x will turn into 2. We plug it in. So this would come out negative 2 times 2 minus 3 is negative 1 squared 
plus 5. So this comes out negative 2. Negative 1 squared means negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Then plus 2. So then we go ahead and say that negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2. Plus, that's a plus 5 right there. So that would be negative 2 plus 5. So this would come out negative 2 plus 5 is a positive 3. So this value for x is 2 is 3. 3 right here. So we will determine the value of y when x is 4. So I'm going to go ahead and show that work on the side right here. So this would come out y equals negative 2 parentheses. That would be minus 3 squared plus 5. Again, inside the, um, the x will be placed by the value of the one that we got here, which is 4. So we go ahead and do the math. This would be negative 2 times 4 minus 3 is positive 1 squared plus 5. So negative 2 times, that's going to be 1 squared is 1 and then plus 5. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 5 is a positive 3. So this value right here is positive 3. I'm going to go ahead and show the rest of the values for um, when x is 1 and when x is 5 down here. Okay, so we have shown the work for x equals 1 and x equals 5 and we have filled the table in. Our third step is to sketch the graph. So we're going to start by sketching the vertex or the locator point. Again, you can start anywhere, but we start on 3 and 5. So that is a positive 3 and positive 5. That's the first dot. The second dot would be a negative 2 and then positive 3. So it's going to go up here. And then the next dot would be on 1 and negative 3. So it goes down here. And then the other dot on 4 would go to positive 3. And then the one with 5 goes with negative 3. And so we go ahead and sketch the graph. So this is the graph of this equation that we have right there. We can tell that the domain for this graph is all real numbers because this graph will extend infinitely towards the negative x-axis and infinitely towards the positive x-axis. And the range here will start from negative 5 down. So I'm going to go ahead and write the domain and range up here. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. The first step is to determine the vertex or the locator point. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Okay, our vertex is located on negative 5, negative 4. Remember, we are going to switch. And that's how I got the negative 5. And we're supposed to keep. That's how I got the negative 4. The second step is to create and complete the table of values. I'm going to go ahead and write the table of values up here. Okay, to put in the values for the table of values right here, we're going to start by putting the vertex into the tables. So we're going to put it in the middle of these blanks. Um, boxes here. So this one is going to go down here. So this will be negative 5 and negative 4. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here, negative 5 and negative 4. So we go ahead and determine the values that would be negative 4, opposite to um, negative 5. So that would be negative 4, negative 3. Then I can go the other way. That's negative 6 and then negative 7. So we go ahead and determine the values for each of these blank boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and show that work up here. Okay, so the value of y when x is negative 4 is negative 1. So what I did here was I plugged in this negative 4 into the x and I did the math. So negative 4 plus 5 is 1 and then square it. 
So square of one would be just one. So three times one is three. Then we have a minus four at the end. So three minus four is negative one. I'm gonna go ahead and show the work for determining the y when x is negative six. Okay, when x is negative 6, the y is negative 1. So please notice that if we have negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is a positive 1 because you have a negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. And so we have 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And I will show the rest of the y values when x is negative 3 and x is negative 7 down here. So these are the work for the rest of this blank boxes here and we have completed the table. And so we can go ahead and move on to the third step. The third step is to sketch the graph. We're gonna start by sketching the vertex first. So it's gonna be on negative five and negative four. So this is where the vertex is gonna sit. The next one is negative four goes with negative one. This is the next dot. And then we have negative three goes with positive eight. So it's gonna go all the way up here. And then we go to negative six. It goes with negative one. So it's gonna go down here. And negative seven, it's gonna go to eight. So this is the other dot right here. So we go ahead and sketch the parabola. We can tell that the domain for this graph is all real numbers because this graph is going towards the negative infinity and this also go, goes towards the positive infinity and so that's gonna be all real numbers on the x-axis. Our range for this would be all values greater than negative four because it's going upward. So I go ahead and write that domain and range down here. Did you get the same answers as this? Good. Perfect. If you found this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!